Welcome to Dialogues for Change. Life is not a void to be filled. It is a plenitude to be discovered. Today I would like to share with you some thoughts on Tai Chi Chuan. Taken from this book, The Tao of Tai Chi Chuan, Way to Rejuvenation by Zhou Tsung Hua. What I would like to share with you more specifically is some stories about Zhang Sangfeng, who is supposed to be the originator of Tai Chi Chuan and of the internal martial arts on Mount Wudang in China. Although there are various people credited with the founding of Tai Chi Chuan, Zhang Sangfeng is generally given the major credit. Zhang Sangfeng was also known as Zhang Dong and Zhang Zhongbao, and is certainly the greatest teacher of Tai Chi Chuan. His ancestors lived on Dragon Tiger Mountain, a Taoist historical site in Jiangxi province in southeast China. His grandfather moved to Yizhu in Liaoning, a northeast province. His father, Zhang Zhuren, was a very intelligent man. Zhang Sangfeng passed the examination given by the government of the Emperor Taizong of the Yuan dynasty and was thereby eligible for a high government position. However, he was devoid of worldly ambition and preferred to live in the mountains. His lack of worldly ambition was admired since the educated Chinese saw the hermit who renounced all connection with society as the ideal and the position of government official as much less satisfying. Zhang Sangfeng was born at midnight on April 9, 1247. The anniversary of this day is now celebrated by followers of Tai Chi Chuan with dining, drinking, and demonstrations of Tai Chi Chuan. To the ancient Chinese, physical appearance reflects a person's level of intelligence and character. This method of evaluation is similar to the more familiar art of palmistry, except that the Chinese look not only at the hand, but also at the whole body. According to legend, Zhang Sangfeng was born a wise man because he had the architect of a tortoise and the figure of a crane. His large round eyes were considered a symbol of intelligence and longevity. At 12 years of age, he began studying the Chinese classics. Because of his good memory and keen perception, he was eventually able to become a government official. Zhang Sangfeng spent some time meditating and planning his future during a visit to Guhong Mountain, where Gu Hong, the minister in the reign of Emperor Yan, was said to have become immortal. After the death of his parents, Zhang Sangfeng resigned from his government position and returned to his birthplace long enough to give his property away to relatives. Then, accompanied by two young boys, he set out to wander the mountains for 30 years, visiting old temples in the hope of meeting a wise man. Finally, he settled in midwestern China, in the beautiful green Baozi mountains, which have three pointed peaks, or something in Chinese. It is said he mastered the well-known Shaolin Chuan during that time. In 1314, at the age of 67, he finally met a Taoist, Hu Long, whose name means fire dragon. This hermit taught Zhang the method of being immortal, but Zhang practiced in the high mountains for four years with very little achievement. He then moved to Mount Wudang, and finally, after staying there for nine years, became aware of the truth in the Tao. Again, Zhang started wandering from north to south, when he returned to his birthplace, he found that all of his relatives had died. When the Yuan dynasty ended in 1368 and the Ming dynasty began, Zhang Sangfeng was afraid that the royal family would need him, since he was a well-known immortal Taoist, so he pretended to be mad. Thus he earned the nickname of the Sloppy Taoist in 1385. The emperor ordered him to serve the government, but he, did, he hid himself near the border of Yuan province, which is in southwest China, until 1399. At that time, he returned to Wudang Mountain to meet his best friend, Wang Puzi. In 1407, Emperor Cheng Tzu sent two officials to visit Zhang on Wudang Mountain, but they could not find him. The emperor then ordered high-ranking officials to build a big temple on Wudang Mountain in Zhang's honor. In 1459, Emperor Yu Chung bestowed the title of immortality on Zhang. Thus, according to legend, Zhang Sangfeng was born at the end of the Song dynasty and lived through the whole Yuan dynasty to the reign of Din Zong in the Ming dynasty, 
a period of more than 200 years. There are different stories as to how Zhang Sangfeng created Tai Chi Chuan. One story states that he created it in his dreams. While this may be improbable, remember that the French mathematician Pascal invented the geometrical theory at 16 years of age in a dream. It is possible that Zhang Sangfeng, especially with his sound foundation in Shaolin Chuan, may have used his subconscious to create Tai Chi Chuan. According to another story, Zhang heard birds on Budang Mountain making an unusual noise and saw them all staring down at the ground where a serpent was lifting its head and watching upward. A moment later, a magpie spread its wings and descended to attack the serpent. The serpent moved slightly to escape the attack but maintained its usual circular shape. The contest continued up and down, back and forth, several times until Zhang stepped out of the door. Immediately the magpie flew away and the serpent disappeared. Zhang then realized the truth of softness or firmness and created Tai Chi Chuan. A third legend states that Zhang Songfeng saw monks walking on Wudang Mountain. He observed that they used too much force and outer strength and therefore lacked balance. If yin and yang were balanced inside the body, he thought one would be less clumsy. Accordingly, he used principles from the Tao, the Tai Chi diagram and the I Ching to develop Tai Chi Chuan. The purpose of the movement in Taiji is to transfer intrinsic energy or qi to the spirit or shen and to use inner rather than outer force. Tales about Zhang Sangfeng have been widely circulated and believed from generation to generation. Many of the stories that follow may seem exaggerated to Westerners. In fact, many Chinese do not believe them. This disbelief results from what have been exposed to the remarkable accomplishment of a person who is even moderately skilled in Tai Chi Chuan. In any case, serious students can use stories of Zhang Sangfeng's achievements to provide examples of their ultimate goals. As such, they are teaching stories which remind us that practice makes perfect. It is said Zhang Sangfeng had five hobbies sword dancing in moonlight, playing Tai Chi Chuan on a dark night, climbing mountains on a windy night, reading classics on a rainy night, and meditating at midnight. He believed that sword dancing in moonlight brought energy, playing Tai Chi Chuan on a dark night brought vigor, climbing mountains on windy nights lengthened his breath, reading classics on a rainy night cleansed his mind, and meditating at midnight brightened his nature. These are the Taoist main goals. If you are able to reach these ends, then you are not far from the Tao. Consider the following abilities the following stories of Zhang Sangfeng's abilities. In bitterly cold winter, when the path in front of the temple was covered with snow, Zhang liked to go out and enjoy the snowy landscape. After he walked on the path, no footprints remained. It was as if no one had stepped there. This phenomenon is called stepping on snow leaving no footprints and is considered the highest ability. He also could melt the snow when he passed by using his inner force, the pure Yang Qi. The heat from his body was so incredible that the path then would appear as if it were under warm sunshine. It is also said that as he meditated at midnight, the chi from his body went rustling through his robe as if the wind had blown it. Moreover, the wall surrounding him shook. These phenomena indicated that his inner force had reached a peak level. He had reached the stage where chi had been transferred to Shen. His spiritual and physical energies were in harmony. One night a sudden rainstorm hit the mountain. Many trees fell and a huge rock weighing near a ton rolled down to the temple but was blocked by another huge rock on the way. It was a critical situation during the storm, but Zhang climbed the edge of the first rock, lifted the second one and threw it into a creek. His strength was truly amazing. Zhang Sangfeng was also fond of apes and cranes, which were always around him in Wudang Mountain. When he forbade himself to eat crooked crops for several months, the ape would go to the forest to pick wild foods for his master. The crane would act as a guard, driving the snakes and serpents away. If a python appeared, the crane would tell Zhang Sangfeng, who killed the python with his bare hands. To do this, Zhang moved his body aside swiftly when the python raised its head and struck. Zhang concentrated his inner force, held his breath, and using Mustang ruffling its mane, rasped the snake's neck with one hand and body with the other. Zhang then turned his body and applied force with his waist and legs so that the python became straight. After the snake was stretched, Zhang would throw it to the hillside, breaking it into several bloody sections. 
It is said that any aged python that felt junk spying will hide itself in the moor or high mountains. It is also said that Jan liked to use bend the bow to shoot tiger, to kill tigers with his bare hands. When a tiger jumped towards him, he stepped forward and turned his torso a little to the right, causing the tiger to miss its target. Jan would then grasp the tiger's rear paws, tearing it into two parts. Jan raised a very big ape that was so clever that after watching his master practice every day for a long time, he could play Tai Chi. Jan named this ape Shweding, which means to learn to be stable. Because the nature of the ape is fickle, and Zhang wanted his pet to have stability. Shui Ding helped him in many ways. For example, it is said that Zhang cut wood without an axe, and Shui Ding picked up the firewood and carried it home. To cut the wood, Zhang stretched his arms using the diagonal flying posture, and slightly separating his two poems to the right and left, broke several branches which dropped to the ground. The Mongolian royal family of the Yuan dynasty once was hunting on Wudang Mountain as Zhang was picking herbs to be used as medicine. He was quite aware that the Mongolians were good archers, but he did not like the pompous attitude. While he stood there watching, the Mongols ordered him to walk away. This made Zhang angry, but he spoke to the prince with a smile, saying, Your Highness hunts with bow and arrow. I use my bare hands. Suddenly a pair of hawk flew across the woods and Zhang jumped up several feet and caught them. He dropped to the ground like a falling leaf without making any noise. The prince was shocked. Then Zhang placed the birds on each of his palms. No matter how hard the birds tried to fly, they could not lift themselves. Zhang then said, I have mercy on living creatures. I do not want to hurt these birds. As soon as he withdrew his palms, the hawks flew into the sky. Angrily, one of the prince's followers drew his bow to shoot an arrow at Zhang. Zhang opened his mouth and caught the arrow with his teeth. Then, holding the arrow with his index and middle fingers, he threw it towards a tree. I have not no need of any violent weapons, said he. The arrow was buried deep in the tree. So here are little inspirations from Zhang Sangfen. So I hope that all the Tai Chi Chuan practitioners amongst you have enjoyed this little story of the life in Zhang Sangfen and these little legends that may inspire us in our own practice. So I hope these stories have inspired you on this Monday, 13th of January 2014. Thank you.